but finding what's beneath the surface is the next step and there are uh, only a few companies in the world uh, who are able to do that. Dave Gallo, who heads up special projects for one of the best, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, is with us here this morning. Thank you, Bob. In 2011, nearly two years after Air France Flight 447 crashed off the coast of Brazil, the Woods Hole staff located the wreckage two and a half miles below the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. Special underwater vehicles called Remus 6000s map the ocean floor through a process called mowing the lawn. The same vehicles were then able to gather high resolution photos of the jet's remains, leading to the recovery of crucial flight data and the cockpit voice recorders. Now, Dave, You've been there before. You, you've done this with the uh, with the Air France plane. What happens if these satellite images yep. turn out to be wreckage? What 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 happens next? Well, then it uh, turns. If we put it over to a team of scientists that, using models of the shape of uh, the various pieces of debris, can look at the currents, the winds, the waves, tides, all that stuff for the past few weeks and backtrack it. Hopefully that'll give us the X on the ocean where uh, to begin the underwater search. Well, I'm told we have this search area narrowed down to about the size of the state of Texas. Yeah. Can you start the underwater search when the search area is that big or do you have to narrow it down? You know, Bob, you, you could, but we, we need to have a much better haystack than that. The Air France uh, search was a 40 mile radius circle, so it was about 5,000 square miles. We're many times that size right now. I mean, nothing's impossible, but we do need to have some uh, real good foundation for where we begin to uh, look beneath the sea. Well, when you locate things beneath the sea using sonar, is that the next step? A sonar, yes, a very, uh, almost like uh, we'd go into that area uh, and do something very akin to plowing a field, very uh, detailed long lines using a sonar, identify the wreck and then move in with higher resolution equipment. And then when you start going underwater with your special vehicles, what, what happens then? Well, then, then once the wreck is identified, you want to almost do a forensic analysis in place using the best cameras, the best robots. It, it's all the same thing. You have to have the, the right technology, the right team, the right game plan, and a and, uh, little bit of luck, a lot of prayer, and then off you go. I'm, I'm looking uh, on the screen now. We're seeing some. Now, what exactly is that? That torpedo-shaped thing you see in its launch pad, it's called a Remus 6000. It's one of the most sophisticated underwater robots on Earth. We've got, uh, we use three of those on the Air France uh, survey search. Uh, they cover about 25 square miles a day. So it's slow going, but the last thing you want to do is go over a spot, miss the aircraft, and then go on to the next spot. And how far are we from that right you know, now? I mean, it, obviously we haven't found it. Yeah, it's yet. frustrating, Bob, because, you know, and, and I don't want to hope against the hopes and prayers of the families by hoping this is wreckage from the plane. Uh, but we're a ways away, you know, in Air France, it was a two year process. It wasn't all spent at sea, but a lot of thinking, a lot of, of uh, things going on, decide who goes and does what next. But, you know, we're at the beginning of that. Well, it's a, we're in here for, a, it's a long haul from here to there. And what do you know about the ocean floor at this particular place, if it turns out this is where the wreckage is? The place that it is, the, is a horrible place to, to do any kind of work. It's, the waters are incredibly w rough. I, I've spent time there in 60 mile an hour winds and 30 foot waves. But the seafloor beneath is relatively smooth and flat. It's an underwater volcanic mountain range. And it's much simpler to work than uh, the Air France uh, area. Uh, so right now, what do you think the chances are <laughs> that there, there is something? I'll weird put it this way. You know, we're looking for some very small needles in a, in a, a bits of a needle in a very large haystack. But if you have the confidence of the government's confidence of the families uh, and, and again, with the right team, the right uh, technologies, nothing's impossible. So I'm confident, given those things, it's impossible to say when because we don't know where to start and when to start. I know you volunteered your help. Has anybody said we need you yet? Not, not yet, Bob. So we're in standby mode. We've offered through the State Department and to the Malaysians directly. So we'll, we'll wait and see. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're Dave. very welcome.